Welcome to our review on specialization in animal cells. First thing then, let's actually understand what we mean by this phrase specialization. And quite simply, when we're talking about a specialized cell, it's one that's been modified in order to carry out a particular function. So we see it's been changed from that standard animal cell that we know the diagram of into something that's been altered to make it better at doing a particular job. The way in which these cells have become specialized is through a process called differentiation. And what we find is during the process of differentiation, then the cells are changed and develop these different subcellular structures that are suited to its purpose. So that when we actually look at some of these specialized cells, they don't necessarily look anything like that standard animal cell diagram that we've all learned in a previous video. What we find is that there's a key difference between when this process of differentiation takes place in animals and in plants. In the case of animal cells, most animal cell differentiation occurs at an early stage of development. And then by the time we're adults, we've lost a lot of the ability to differentiate. Whereas if we look at plants, then they actually retain this ability to differentiate their cells throughout their lives. What we're going to do now then is have a look at three key examples that you need to know for your AQA exam of specialized animal cells. So the first one is the nerve cell. And the whole purpose of nerve cells is to carry electrical impulses around your body to actually allow us to communicate really quickly between those different body parts. We've got three key adaptations that you need to know about here. The first one is at one inch, you can see there's all these little kind of branchy sticky out bits called dendrites. And they've got lots of those all the way around that cell body there. And the reason for that is that it allows them to connect on to lots of other nerve cells. So each one of those little branches there can connect onto another nerve cell so we can amplify that signal really quickly. The second is the presence of this structure called an axon, which you can see running down the middle there. And that whole purpose is to carry the impulse from one place to another. And the axon itself can be incredibly long. So you've got your longest axon will be running from your spine to your big toe. Whereas in other animals, it's actually several meters long. We've also got our synapse, which is the very end on the right there, which is basically the nerve ending. And what we need to do is have some method of communicating from the end of our nerve cell in the synapse there to the next cell, whether it be another nerve cell or whether it's the muscle. So what we actually have here are these chemical transmitters contained within little vesicles at the end there so that as the impulse reaches the end, it signals those chemicals to be released, which allows the impulse to travel between the cells. Our second specialized cell is the sperm cell. Now, hopefully we know that the function of the sperm cell is to carry the male's DNA to the egg cell where it can join with the female DNA. And it's got a few key adaptations to allow it to do this. First of all, if you have a look at the picture there, you can see it's got a very big nucleus and that's got all of the DNA from the father. It's also at the very, very front there, got this structure called an acrosome. Now the acrosome contains digestive enzymes which allow it to break down the outer layers of the egg so that the sperm can actually join with it. In the middle section you can see there's little red blobs there. Those are mitochondria and there are lots of them. The whole purpose of having mitochondria is to transfer energy and our sperm is obviously going to need energy in order to get it to move from where it enters to where it actually needs to fertilize. And this last one there is all to do with the movement. It has that long tail to allow it to move to the egg itself, whether it be through water in some animals or through the female reproductive system in humans. Our third and final specialized animal cell are muscle cells. And I've given you the picture of striated muscle on the left there. The whole purpose of muscle cells is to allow for that contraction and subsequent relaxation to allow us to move. Now, there are three key adaptations that we need to know about of our muscle cells. 
The first one is the actual proteins that it's made from. So it's made of these special proteins that actually slide over each other to allow the muscle cells to contract. Second one is that they contain lots of mitochondria, again, to transfer energy that we need for that contraction process. And our third and final one is that they can store glycogen, which we can then break down into glucose, which can then be used in respiration in the mitochondria when we need to actually make those cells contract. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can recall what the terms specialization and differentiation mean. You recall when differentiation takes place in animals and in plants, and you can also talk about our nerve cells, sperm cells and muscle cells in terms of their function and their adaptations.